Hi, it's Tharno with Wave Oven Recipes, and this is my review of the Ninja Foodie XL Pressure Cooker Steam Fryer with Smart Lid. So let's get it on out of the box now. All right, so we've got the classic box within a box. So gonna get it on out of here. Alright, so here's the cooker out of the box and all of the tape and all that whatnot off of it. It's not the lightest cooker. The box itself weighed about 34 pounds and the cooker itself, it's got a bit of weight to it. You know, if you're not one who's uh, into lifting cookers that have a bit of weight, you'd want to have this somewhere where you don't have to move it, you know, once you get it set up. It's just my opinion if you're someone who you know, has trouble moving things around. I know some people who watch my videos have that concern. But this is the power cord, and you see it's a three-prong ground wire power cord, and you know, it's a nice, nice length cord there. Not too long, but not too short. And just real quick, I'm just gonna get into this little packet here, because they've got the little paperwork all in a nice little packet for you and they've got this uh, it's kind of like a quick starting guide to kind of get you going if you're you know just wanting to go quick got your full manual right there you got your what they call the inspiration guide it's like cookbook basically it's a cookbook and let's see once you get the recipes because you know a lot of it's like some preliminaries and talk about some things once we get to the actual recipes on page 14, we go through recipes all the way to, and even after you get past like the long wordy recipes, there's like cooking charts and such. So we can count those as recipes too, because they're, they're helping you cook and giving you instructions on how to cook things. So, you know, basically when you get through everything else, I mean, it goes all the way to page 109 I mean so you get a lot as far as provided recipes and instructions for you know how to cook things you you know they give you a bunch and so that's cool and so now we'll look at this other accessory here and this you use in conjunction with the smaller rack you can use the smaller rack, you know just to put on the bottom if you need it lower or you can use that one or you can kind of put them like this on top of each other give yourself two layers which is kind of cool and then you've got your crisp basket with the diffuser on the bottom and you basically always are going to have your diffuser on when you use the crisp basket so the crisper basket you would stick in there and you put your stuff in there when you're you know wanting to air fry something that you need a basket of this type for you could air fry in something like this or you know you could do your pressure cooking in this here. You probably wouldn't use this for pressure cooking. I, I wouldn't use this for pressure cooking, but you may use these for pressure cooking if you need them. And for your steam cooking, you might use, you know, whatever accessories suit you for your steam cooking. You'd probably use these here if you want in some combination. Now I want to give you a look around a cooker. So you can see around here, and there you have your uh, your condensation cup that you pop out of the back there. Looks a little different from condensation cups and other pressure cookers from what I see there. Doesn't look like you could cross use ones from other cookers. But you see around the you know sides here. You see over here it's got this big fin thing there, and we'll take a closer look at it all in a moment. Now this is a 14-in-1 cooker, that means it can do 14 different functions all in this one cooker. I will go through every one of those later in how to, you know, basically adjust things to get to each of those settings. We'll talk about each one of those in a little bit of, little bit of detail later. And this is an 8-quart cooker, so it's the larger size cooker for pressure cookers. Most are 6 or 8-quart. And most people who get a six quart end up getting an eight quart later. 
um, you know, I, I will say when I got my first one, I got a six quart and I just said, well, you know, I, I probably won't be one of those that need eight, but you know, you find out you are one of those who needs eight. And I'd say if you, you know, you probably just want to start out with an eight quart cooker and be done with it, even though it, you know, it's bigger, it, you know, maybe more of an expense, but most people end up finding out that they want an eight quart. Also, the wattage is 1760 watts. So it comes in on the higher end as far as wattage. And as far as the eight versus six quart thing goes, at the moment, right now, this cooker, this particular cooker only comes in an eight quart variety. It doesn't come in a six quart. So, you know. And I do want to mention that the temperature ranges for this cooker are between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That varies based on the function that you're using. The time ranges for this cooker go up to 24 hours and that depends on the function that you're using as well. So a lot of variety for a 14 in one cooker. All right, so let's get a closer up view of the cooker. And you know, with the cooker totally unplugged and off, nothing's lit up just yet, but we'll do that in a moment. But I wanted to show you here, there's the slider that you use depending on the type of functions that you're using. It goes in three different positions. So the first one is like for pressure cooking type of functions. The middle one is for steam type functions. And the far right is for air frying type functions. When it's in the pressure cook uh, position there, the lid don't, doesn't open here. It won't open. But if you move it over to like steam or air fry, then it does open. So there's your handle there. And it'll open, but not when it's on pressure. And it's not supposed, this slider is not supposed to be something you're able to move when the cooker has pressure on it. And you don't want to open it when it has pressure on it. Now in the pressure release valve here, Basically, you see down here, it's got, it says vent or pressure, and you can have it to either the pressure position or to the vent position when you're venting. This only matters when you're pressure cooking. When you're pressure cooking, you want to have it set to the pressure until you're done and you want to pressure release, you can switch it to the vent. But for the other functions, for all the steam functions, like when you're over here or when you're over here on air fry, this doesn't matter. This this pressure release does not matter for these other two functions. It only matters for your pressure cooking. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open up. First, I wanted to show you that fin there a little easier. I I guess for some reason in the design they had to have that because you gotta you know open up maybe it keeps things from tipping over that they you know put that fin down there, but. When I open up inside here, you can see inside and you can see up here in the cooker there. And here you've got your little, you know, little cover there that you, you know, would take off when you want to clean. That keeps things from getting clogged in the pressure release. And you see your air fry coil there. And you see the ring. They specify that this ring is only for this cooker. You can't use the ring from any other pressure cooker is what they say. You only can use the ones that are made for this lid because this cooker has just one lid. So it does everything under one lid. This one lid does your pressure cooking. This one lid does your steam cooking. This one lid does your air frying. And you never have to change lids, which is a first as far as I'm aware in the pressure cooker air fryer space of cookers Ninja has dropped the first of this type. All right, so here I have my Ninja Foodi Deluxe XL pressure cooker air fryer next to the new Ninja Foodi with the special steam crisp features and the single lid that does it all. And so basically you can see they look, you know, pretty similar in design. I think, you know, this one just has a bigger fin over here than this one has on the side. This one, you know, this one doesn't have the big fin kind of sticking out like that. But other than that, they're, you know, they're kind of similar. But the one 
super cool thing is this one only needs one lid this one you need this lid for air frying you need a separate lid for your pressure cooking I will say that the ring that's in this one you can't see the difference when you look at it but you can definitely feel the difference in the ring when you feel it the ring that's in this one is a much sturdier tougher ring than the ring that comes with this cooker for its pressure lid so they're not the same ring at all and it's something that you can feel a lot better than you can see in my opinion but um, basically you can see them both here and these are both eight quart cookers and so you know they both open from the side here with the lock attached lid and so you know they both got the eight quart pot it's the same exact pot no no difference at all in these pots so I do believe you can swap the pots yeah you can you can swap the pot you just can't swap the pressure ring and just to do a quick measure if I do or try and do kind of a top to bottom measure the old deluxe XL comes in at about 14 and a half inches high maybe a little maybe about 14 inches high yeah maybe about 14 where the new one with the steam crisp features all, yeah it's about 14 too so let's see again yeah they're both about they're actually about the exact same height they're about the exact same height so that's pretty interesting there going across and this is really kind of a guesstimate because it's kind of round but it's about about 14 inches out there and this one here when well actually I probably should have gone from the handle let's see I'll go from the handle there on out it's about yeah I think I got it right before so it's about 14 inches let's do this one so we go from here on over to the end of that hump I think it's about 16 inches because of that hump you got another couple of inches on that hump there all right so let's do our initial plug-in of the cooker and we'll see what happens when we plug things on in and we see when we plug it in there's basically no action no change no fanfare there but then we'll turn the cooker on and as soon as we light things up now we've got some display action going on I will say that I like with this cooker the position of the pressure release valve doesn't put it under my cabinets with the deluxe the old deluxe the positioning of the pressure release valve was further toward my cabinets I had to literally spin the pressure cooker when I would do pressure cooking with this one I don't believe I'll need to do the spin to do pressure cooking to avoid steam and hitting hitting my cabinets when I let steam out so that's pretty cool I'll be able to keep things face forward with this cooker all the time and I guess as long as I leave it where it's at you know it won't really you know won't really bother the cabinets too much I probably could move it a little bit like this way to avoid it hitting my cabinet when I open it up so that's kind of cool so now let's do a full review of all the functions and I'm going to slide over the pressure and you see when I slide over the pressure it shows the lock it says we're on pressure and you can pressure cook on the high setting or the low setting you see over here it does high low and you can do that for up to four hours and here you've got your time and you can up your time so you got your temperature or your setting for level of pressure and you got your time over there down here you've got your power button and your keep warm we'll talk about keep warm a little bit you got your start stop down there along with this knob here that you can spin and it's not a button it's just a spin knob and we'll use that when we get into some of the other functions all right now I'm going to slide the slider here over to the steam crisp setting now with steam crisp you basically can cook and keep things moist while you're you know getting some crisp on things and the temperature ranges are between 300 degrees Fahrenheit and 450 degrees Fahrenheit and you can add time after the cook ends and it won't try and preheat again but it does preheat when initially starting a cook on this setting and so you should already have the food inside 
before the preheat starts. And so you see here it's basically on the steam and crisp setting there. So that's for the steam and crisp. So now I'm going to spin the dial down to steam and bake. And steam and bake is for fluffy bread baking and the temperature ranges are between 225 degrees Fahrenheit to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and the time range goes up to one hour and 15 minutes. So that's all you get for your steam crisp is your steam and crisp and your steam bake. Now if I slide over to air fry, now things are on the air fry type of a setting and air fry which is the first one has no preheat it cooks between 300 degrees Fahrenheit and 400 degrees Fahrenheit for up to one hour and if you're cooking a lot of food they tell you to shake periodically and the lid pauses when you open automatically which is pretty cool and basically air fry or resume when you close the lid next if we go over to broil here we have the broil setting Broil is fixed at that 450. You can't get out of 450 when you're on broil. And uh, basically you can do broil for up to 30 minutes. The next function is a bake roast function. And with the bake roast function, you basically can use the cooker like an oven. The temperature ranges are between 250 degrees Fahrenheit and 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You can cook for up to 4 hours. And the next function we can spin to is dehydrate. With dehydrate, your temperature ranges are between 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 195 degrees Fahrenheit. You can cook for up to 12 hours. Now, they do sell a separate dehydrator stand. And that dehydrator stand that's sold separately, that allows you to hold up to five layers of food. Like with the accessories I showed you, you can do two layers, but if you want to get that dehydrator accessory, that basically works with this and with some of their other ninja foodies you can do up to five layers of food now the next function we spin on the dial here is proof so if you want to proof some dough before you do you know you bake of it you can do proof between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit for up to two hours the next function we go to is a sear saute so that's when you want to use it kind of like a stove top and it has five heat settings you see basically you know it just kind of goes low two three four five is high that's your temperature setting options and basically you don't get any time setting so it just runs until you stop you know you start it and then when you're done you hit the start stop to stop it but it does have kind of a safety setting built in and at lower settings it's going to automatically turn off after four hours of it running at higher temperature settings it's going to automatically turn off after one hour now the next option on the dial is steam this is for steaming sensitive foods it has no temperature setting they don't tell you what temperature it steams at but it runs for up to 30 minutes the next option that we have on the dial here is sous vide. Now with sous vide you use vacuum sealed sous vide bags in a water bath and that you have a temperature range of between 120 degrees Fahrenheit and 190 degrees Fahrenheit for up to 24 hours. That's where you get your 24 hours at. Now our next option is the slow cook option and you can cook food slow and low for up to 12 hours and temperature ranges are low and high so you got high and low and you can do you know what you want to do up to 12 hours the next option is yogurt and with yogurt it does the steps of the yogurt making process there and it tells you what to do through the different steps as you go through yogurt and next we have the keep warm button that I wanted to talk about here the keep warm button basically automatically it's gonna after steam slow cook and pressure cook it's gonna automatically flip over to keep warm but if you don't want things to automatically flip over to keep warm after a cook is done you would press the keep warm button after one of those functions has started running and so you know you can disable it so it won't do the 
keep warm after your cook is finished. All right, now as you should do with any new pressure cooker, do a water test. So we're going to do a water test here. So for their water test, you put in three cups of water. So this is the first two cups of water. And this here is our third cup of water. So we got those in. And now I'm going to close things up and go to slide over to our pressure cooker. So now that we're in our pressure cooker, I'm going to keep it at the high pressure. I'm going to bring the time down to two minutes and hit start. And you see that it's basically preheating, then it's going to pressurize, making sure that my pressure relief valve is in the pressure position for pressure cooking. And so we'll let that basically build up its pressure, do its two minute cook. And when it's done, we'll do a quick release of the pressure. All right, we're coming to the last seconds of the water test. And so as we get down to two and one, all right, so time's up. Now it goes over to that automatic keep warm that I mentioned. And so now I'm going to try and release the pressure cautiously. I don't know if it's going to chime as I let the pressure out. We'll see. All right, the cooker just finally depressurized. You can see it took a couple minutes for it to depressurize, and when it's done, it gives you a message saying open the lid. There's a thing that looks like a little button behind the pressure release valve. That's the float that is used in pressure cooking. You don't do anything with that, but you know if you see something that behind the lid here that looks like a little button, that's the float. You don't do anything with that. It manages itself. But now that we can basically open the cooker up, we can, whoops, well, actually we need to switch to a option that allows us to open the lid, and then we can open the lid. Got some water condensation there, but I see some hot water in there, so it did finish cooking just fine. I'm going to hit the stop to basically end the cook there. Now let's see, if I switch back to pressure, when I switch back to pressure, it lost my setting. You see, it doesn't show the high setting for two minutes that I had when I did my water test. So this cooker basically has no memory. It doesn't remember anything. And so there's no need in doing like an unplugged memory test because it's apparently not going to remember anything. So actually we'll just, we'll just, just for the sake of it, we'll go over here to air fry and we'll do like um, 19 minutes and hit start. And then I'm going to hit stop so that, you know, I've done the air fry. And now I'm going to switch. Well, you see, even after it's done, it switched right to 20 minutes. So, and then you switch back. Yeah, it, it doesn't remember anything. So this cooker has zero memory. That's just something to keep in mind there. All right, so let's do an air fry test with some frozen fried shrimp and I'm going to use the crisper basket with the diffuser and stick that on in there first. And now I'm going to get myself some of these shrimp and put them in and just give you a look at one before I put it in. I'm going to see how many I can put in in a decent single layer. Alright, so I was able to get nine in there comfortably without them stacking on top of one another. So I'm going to close things up and turn the cooker on. I've already got it over to the air fry and it's on air fry. And so I'm going to up the temp to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, going to lower the cooking time down to just 10 minutes. I like that the cooker doesn't beep when I press the buttons. The ones that do that are pretty annoying. But we're going to hit start with that. And we're going to go ahead and let things go ahead and air fry. Same lid. I'll bring you back when it's done. Alright, the cook's in progress, but while it's going, I just want to test something out. If I can adjust temp on the fly, and it looks like I can if I, yeah, I could go down or up. So I can adjust the temp on the fly, and it's cool with that. I could probably, oh, I can adjust my temp on the fly and my time on the fly. Earlier I was doing time, I think I might even talk about temp. But you can adjust both settings on the fly, which is cool. 
And I'm also going to try and just open that lid and things pause, close up, things run again. That's pretty nice. And halfway through at the five minute mark, it made a beep and it said shake. So it was like a time if I wanted to shake things, if I had a lot in there, I could have shook it up. But we're going to let it keep on going at this setting of 400 until the time is up and we'll just see what we get in the end. All right, we're done with this cook. And so now I'm going to go ahead and open things up. I hear a lot of sizz looks. They look done. I'm going to stick the thermopin in one. See what the temperature is inside of one. Yeah, they're, they're real hot. I mean, they didn't even need 10 minutes. So probably could have tried 8 minutes to see what I would get. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to get one of these out and let you see one. See if I can grab it from a part where it won't, it'll be visible to you. But there you go. Whoops, don't want to drop it. Gonna get another one on out. Show you one more. So there you there you go if you can see it. But whoa, <laughs> good thing I caught it. But basically, you know, a nicely air fried shrimp there. So I'll go ahead and get the rest of these on out. Alright, so now with the shrimp all done, we thank God for one and just do a quick taste of one. Well, they are hot, crispy, and done. And I could have asked God that I not burn my mouth, and you know, I may, you know, maybe I would have thought for a second not to, uh, you know, stick it in so fast. But it's pretty hot, and so they're good. And so you know, the thing does a good job air frying. What can I say? All right. So now we're going to try a pressure cook test. I'm going to pressure cook some lentils. You don't, when you do lentils, you don't soak them. And you really don't have to cook most, most beans, but especially not lentils. And so just get a cup, heaping cup of lentils in there. And I'm going to put in two cups of water with the lentils. And I just like to move things around so that there's not too much in one part of the pot. Just make sure it's kind of even in there. Sorry about the arm in the way. But going to close things on up and wake the cooker up and going to slide the slider over to pressure. And for lentils we need low pressure and just five minutes of that low pressure. And so with that I hit start and it's going to preheat and then do its pressure cook thing. Going to switch that pressure release valve over there. All right, so with the lentils, you give them a 10 minute natural release, meaning that you leave them in there after the pressure cooking is done for 10 minutes and then you release the pressure, but it naturally released on its own during that 10 minute time frame. So you see it's already saying I can open. So I'm going to, well, I guess I'll switch the slider to let steam out. Maybe there's, I guess there's a little more that was still in there. So, even though it said open, there was still a little steam, I guess, in there. So, just go ahead and hit the slaughter now and open up. And now we'll try and go in there and get ourselves some lentils out. Here is our lentils there, so we'll pop those in there. So, they look good. They turned out well. All right, so... The lentils have finished cooking and I'm going to do a quick taste test and thank God for these and try and boil them. Pray I don't burn myself. Alright, so they turned out pretty good. They're, you know, got a nice mix of kind of, they're not too mushy is what I'm trying to say. They're not too mushy. They have a degree of firmness but at the same time they're fully cooked 
So they turned out pretty well. And so the cooker is able to do a pressure cooking. I think with the deluxe that cooking something like lentils, they would be probably a little more mushier doing the same pressure cook that I've done before with lentils in that cooker. So I think that the uh, Ninja Foodie Deluxe probably does a slightly harder pressure cook in my opinion than this uh, steam crisp one does. You know, they, it can do the pressure cooking, but I think it does it a little gentler than the Ninja Foodi Deluxe XL that I had. So, you know, just a, little, a small difference, but all the same, same setting. Both get the job done, and the lentils are good. All right, now I'm going to try the steam crisp function cooking a whole six pound chicken and they have a recipe for herb roasted chicken that I'm going to be using with some small modifications to what they have recommended in their recipe and so the first ingredient is the juice of two lemons so I'm using basically three ounces of lemon juice to represent that also, they call for a tablespoon of whole black peppercorn. So black peppercorns go in there. And you're supposed to use a half a cup of canola oil. I'm going to use extra light virgin olive oil instead. So put that in there. Also, they call for five garlic cloves peeled and crushed. So have those here. And just going to drop those on in see if I can get the rest of that in there all right now the next ingredient is some stalks of rosemary which I don't have so I'm just using um, I'm just gonna put some parsley in there just shake in some parsley flakes so just give a little touch of flavor with those with the parsley flakes so that'll be fine and next we have the star of the show, which is a six pound chicken. You're supposed to have it in the crisper basket. So that's here with our diffuser underneath. And so basically got it all in there. Those legs are looking kind of, uh, they're kind of sticking up there. So I'm trying to, you know, I guess I could have tied it up, but they are sticking up there. I mean, it's, it's a six pound chicken. It's kind of big. And that's what the recipe calls for as well. So we're going to we're going to see what happens. Um, let's see. I guess this I guess it'll be all right. I could tie it down or something, but I'm not. So that's just the choice I'm making. Turn the cooker on. We're on the steam crisp function, and temperature we want to take down to 365. So we got that down 365. Just giving you a good look at that and 55 minutes is the recommended cook time in the recipe and so um, this is on page 18 of their cookbook if you get the cooker the inspiration guide they call it and so with that we go ahead and we hit start and it's supposed to like preheat for like maybe 15 minutes or so and then it cooks for the 55 minutes but once the cook is fully complete I'll bring you back All right, we're coming into the last 10 seconds of a 55 minute cook. And it does make this steam sound the whole time. It's maybe like an air fryer sound of, you know, if it's kind of like you have like a loud air fryer, it's about the sound level of a loud air fryer when it's doing the steam cook. And you know, the steam, the air fryer has its own sound. I did forget to say something correctly when I was talking about the ingredients. When I put that half a cup of fluid in, that was a half a cup of chicken broth. That was not a half a cup of oil. I used a tablespoon of oil on the chicken, or on the body of the chicken, and put some salt and pepper on the body of the chicken before putting it into the crisper basket. But that was chicken broth. They recommend in their recipe to use a half a cup of water. I just used chicken broth instead of water. So... We're going to go ahead now 
and see what's going on as far as this chicken. We're supposed to take it out and put it on, well, basically just kind of take the basket out and let it rest for 5 to 10. But I'm checking temperature. This chicken is not done. This chicken is 140s. It's in the 140s. So we don't have a fully cooked chicken in 55 minutes, which is a shame. And, you know, it was a big chicken, but shame it didn't work out. We're going to now basically have to, let's see, am I able to adjust? No, I'll have to, I guess, do a stop and it's at 390. I'm going to take it down to 375 is what I'm going to do. So a little hotter. And for cooking time, I could do, I guess I can do 20 minutes. Let's try 15 since things should already be preheated in there and it's got to preheat again possibly. Well, it skipped the preheat because it was already hot. So we'll just let it do another 15 at 375. We'll see what happens. Alright, so now we have a one hour, ten minute cook and we'll check the temperature again and Lord willing we'll have a totally done chicken now. So, after one hour and ten minutes, let's see what we have here. 160, it's in the 160s. It's in the, well over here it was in the lower 160s. Yeah, it's in the lower 160s there. I do believe, I'm just going to, you're supposed to take it out for like, like five to ten minutes let it set outside to reabsorb. I'm just going to leave it in for, uh, you know, about 10 minutes and then I'm going to take it on out. And I do believe that, you know, even though I usually don't always like to just leave things to carry over, in this case I am, I mean, there are some small pockets that seem to still be not totally cooked. And so, I'm going to leave it in for that because that's how I prefer to do it. I totally know you can take these things out and carry over while it's said that room temperature is supposed to do its job. I know all that and I've done it before. I don't like it. So I'm leaving it in there. So I'm going to let it set until it, you know, I'm sure that I think it's warmer. And I'll take it out in about 10 minutes and then just set it over here. All right, so I let things hang out in there for about 10 minutes, so we're talking about an hour, 25 minutes or so cooking in there. Um, basically, this cook basically takes as long as it would, you know, in a full-up air fryer oven to do the steam thing is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that, you know, it takes about that long, um, maybe a little longer, but... wing kind of fell off there. Alright, so this is the finished chicken. You can see that, you know, the uh, outside is pretty crispy. The meat does look like it's moist. I'm going to just go ahead and cut on in and let me grab myself a plate real quick. This took far longer than I guess you would expect this to have taken and grab a fork. So just gonna cut cut into the meat, get a good cut of breast meat. When we see in the breast meat it's fully cooked, fully done. I see all the way down to the bottom, fully cooked. So it did fully cook, it just took a while. The meat does look moist. There's a lot of moistness in it. Let me just cut the bottom off, trim that off. And you can see that meat, that meat looks good. I mean it's well cooked and it's moist. So that's pretty nice. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a quick taste of it uh, right here. So thank God now for some chicken. Yeah. Mmm. I must say, let me let me get a let me get some of the side that caught some of the crispiness. 
think it's look at that too. Now uh, I must say that chicken tastes very good. It tastes very good. It's very moist. I mean it's melt in your mouth butter moist. The outside that catches the crispness is a bit seared. A little seared. It's not like, you know, totally dried out meat seared. It's like, you know, now that I've tried it, I think I may do it again, even though it takes a long time. I may do it again. I think I probably will do it again. Because it's so moist. It's so moist inside, while the outside is nicely seared. I mean, that, that's really nice. And it's a... I guess it's a more complete searing of the exterior than you would get if you tried to pressure cook and then air fry unless you flip while you're air frying because this chicken has you know searing all over it I mean it's seared on both sides so I like it I really think this steam crisp thing it's pretty nice and it's something you have to try the moistness is incredible while at the same time having that sear on the exterior. It's a a new thing and I like it now that I've you know actually done the taste test. That's really won me over. I wasn't gonna do it again. But now that I taste test it with it, I'm I'm definitely gonna do it again. Alright, let's talk about cleaning the cooker now. Basically when you clean it, personally I prefer to clean everything by hand for longevity's sake. But they say that the cooking pot, the silicone ring, the reversible rack, the cooking crisp basket, the detachable diffuser, all can be used in the dishwasher. They uh, don't say which level in the dishwasher. But they do mention, you know, if you're going to do it by hand, which I do, don't use any scouring pads or harsh abrasives. And they do give an option to steam clean the unit. And they say if you want to steam clean it to remove any buildup, that might pick up up here in the lid part you can basically put in three cups of water on the and slide the air fryer to the steam settings to air fry you go to air fry and then you basically get down to your steam where is steam there's steam so yeah so you do on the air fry part here steam and then after you do that you're going to do it for 30 minutes. You just run that for 30 minutes and then you wipe off your excess and such. But cleaning by hand, you know, warm soapy rag, cleaning off everything. If anything's ground in, if anything happens to get ground in, you can just soak it. That's how I do things. All right, so let's talk about warranty. This cooker has a one year limited warranty. And so I hope that this review has uh, given you some good insight into this cooker. It's definitely given me a lot of insight into this cooker. It can do the pressure cooking. It can do the air frying. It does the steam crisp, which is kind of nice, but it definitely looks like it needs to cook a little longer necessarily than the recipes may give for that. And it does take some time. It seems like if you want to get things done faster, you could just pressure cook and do some air frying, but it's not going to necessarily give you as well rounded a crisp in my opinion unless you while you're air frying the chicken try and flip it over and such and then that you know after you pressure cook the chicken that's going to be kind of messy because your chicken might not want to hold together very well after a pressure cooking so basically you know it's all up to you and I do like the cooker myself I will uh, Lord willing do you know some follow-up material regarding it later and give you my thoughts on it you know later but uh, with all of that said, I will say in the video description, there are ways to help this channel. You can also check out my blog, SuperWaveOvenRecipes.com. Also, Lord willing, whenever it uh, is available to folks that I have an affiliate relationship with, I'll put an affiliate link down in the video description for it and put it in my Amazon shop. Now, with all of that said, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share the video with a friend. Leave your comments, subscribe, hit the notification icon, and good eating.